Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday, and it's a beautiful day. Just the temperature's perfect, the sky is blue, and we got a great mosh ahead of us. So let's get downstairs and let's get started. Okay, uh, like I said, we got a lot to get to. First of all, uh, we are long overdue for a challenge. So I'm going to put one out there today just to get some everybody back into the shop. Uh, you know, you've had all summer long to relax, and now it's get time to put our nose to the grindstone come up with a decent challenge and my challenge is uh, it's just a, a quick one an easy one and it's gonna be to make a small wooden hammer and I'll, I'll tell you why now the reason I came up with this challenge is because the other day I, I grabbed I was using a hammer again and I said you know I, I always um, I have a you know a bunch of soft blow hammers but you know there's nothing like a disposable wooden hammer and I made most of these and um, I, these so you just throw them together quickly but they they really do come in handy uh, first of all you, you can use any scrap wood you have you can use an old broomstick for the handle you don't need a lathe or anything as you can see most of these are uh, weren't made on the lathe but um, what's really interesting is that when you take a small hammer like this, uh, you know, it's made to deform a little bit around the part that you're working on. So they they are disposable. If you make these long enough, you can always trim off with the chop so you can always cut a quarter of an inch off and you have a brand new surface. They're just fantastic. I use them all the time. Uh, not this so much. This was a... a just a, a, a prototype for a, a, a one that I made for a friend, but I never liked these type, these round type hammers. You know, a lot of times um, uh, people that do marble work and, and stone masons, things like that, use round. Ha I never liked them. I always like a, a flat surface to on whatever I'm using. That's just my personal preference. Now, I'm very fond of these two hammers. I used these a lot when I was building some furniture. Uh, I have the angles and everything. They're just for me because that's just what I like. And um, these are really nice, uh, the way I, I made these. And uh, basically what they are, I looked, I happened to come across a, a nice 2x4. And this 2x4 was an old growth 2x4. And when I say old growth, look at the growth rings on here. Now, Let me here's show you a these. standard 2x4. This is a newer 2x4, meaning it was... Uh, cut within the last 20 years these are grown on farms and you could if you look here at the growth rings you could see each one of these is a year that the tree is growing and you could see here that um because the growth rings are kind of separated a little bit free and this is not bad i've seen them worse but you could see that this is a, a tree that was grown on a farm where they have a lot of room to grow fast and that's why that the growth rings are so separated like this now let me show you compared to an old growth Look at the growth rings on here. You got to look real close because you see them. You see how, look at how tight these are. Look how tight these growth rings are. And be, this is an old growth piece of lumber. So you can imagine how old this tree was when they cut it down, but it just makes this very dense, this wood. So look for an old growth or a tightly tight, a lot of rings, or you can use a uh, maple or a real hardwood, anything that you want to now, make. You your can hammer. make your hammers, like I said, any shape, size you want, round, square. You can have the handles. You can have the handles square, round, whatever. They're so easy to make. Again, they're made that they you can use them to bash, especially metal. They won't mar metal. I use these. I can't tell you how often I use these things. Let me show you two of my favorite hammers. This one here, my great grandfather made. My buddy Richie always used to say this was a. Uh, he used to say this was Jesus's hammer, <laughs> but look at this. Look at my, my great grandfather carved these around his fingers. Look at that. So his hand was here too. I mean, every time I use this, I think about it. And uh, and he must have made this out of some kind of like ligament vitae or so. This is a really hard wood, and uh, you can see here it's it's wedged in. And just he, he probably put this together, and this was made for when they were doing timber framing and things like that. But this stays under my workbench. I don't use it much, but this means a my lot. My all-time favorite hammer is this one here. This was I made for my mom before she passed. This was uh, my mom used to like clear ice cubes. You know, she used to like a lot of ice in her. You know, when she used to have an iced tea and things like that. So I used to buy the bags of ice. You know, and a lot of times they're frozen. So you, she used to use a regular hammer to try and break, but it would break the plastic and stuff. So one day I came down to shop and I drew this together and, and look at this this was from June 2010 and uh, this this has been used thousands of times and, and this is such a great and it worked out perfect what it was is this regular piece of wood you know and uh, but it's very lightweight and uh, so she could get a, a fast swing and she would hold the bag of ice and just knock it and it would split the ice apart without pulverizing it just it, it worked out perfect and uh, 
you know, she used it every single day. She just uh, loved this thing. And so uh, I'll always keep it on. This is one hammer that I'll, I'll keep for the rest of my life. I mean, this thing uh, means a lot to me. But you can see why uh, something so small, a small hammer like this or something that you can make can come in so You know, useful. one other thing about Mom's Ice Hammer. Look how nice the... Uh, the top of that came out, you know, I mean, uh, this was, I fitted this, I was really happy with the way that came out, you know, fitted so nicely, you know, and chiseled that out and there's no gaps or anything. And then I put a little wood wedge in there and, and then I pinned it, you know, just so that it wouldn't pop off. So the challenge it. is out there. You have one month, you know, the deal, I'll talk about it again, but, uh, if you don't have uh, you don't have to make a video or anything, you could send me the photographs. I'll have everything and I'll, I'll give you more time to talk about how to get the, uh, the product, the finished product or the picture to me and then we'll post it up and this should be a lot of fun. Very easy to do. Just a, a simple wooden hammer. Uh, you can make it, embellish it, you can make it fancy or you can make it simple. But either way, I promise you will use it because it's such a great thing. So uh, let's get that started and let's see what else okay, we got up. I know we've been doing a lot of locks. <laughs> Some of you guys like it, you know. I, I think there are a lot of padlock, uh, secret padlock enthusiasts out there. So I got one that I, I really like and uh, I have a bunch of these. And I don't know if a lot of you have ever seen this type before, but check it out. It's pretty okay, cool. Okay, this is a uh, Sargent and uh, this type of lock is called a push key lock. And uh, you might have seen these before, or maybe not, uh, but uh, these were, you know, old time locks, and but they were very good. And let me show you how they worked. Uh, you take the key here, you place it in like this. Now, unlike a regular key, where you would just turn, if you try and turn, it won't work. You have to push this. So by pushing it like this, it raises the shackle, and it takes it out of this little hole here. And you can see that's how you open the lock. And then to put it back, you just bring this back like this and it will go into place and then you could remove the key. So you have to push that little cylinder in. Let's clean it up and see what we can do with this. These are really cool locks and heavy duty. And uh, let's see how nice we can make this one. Uh, also, we're gonna take and uh, clean up this key because look how nice that key is, huh? Uh, I, I love when they used to do the embellishments on the key. So we'll clean this key up too, make it nice and uh, get started with that. And we are calling this project done. Look here how nice the key came out. You know, polish it all up. Brass is always beautiful when it's polished, isn't it? And uh, and this is no no exception. And the thing is, they do tarnish up uh, quickly, bra brass. But when they are clean, it looks nice. And uh, over here, it has the uh, bronze shackle. And that copper bronze color is so nice. It's such a warm glow to it. Love that. This is the uh, hardened... Uh, Probably like an iron type body and uh, just nice. It used to come, they used to come painted. Sometimes they were even uh, red on the letters and things like that. But look how nice this works now. Just push it in and so smooth because it's all lubricated. And when you want to close it, you know, it close right up. But these push key locks are, <laughs> I always found them interesting because they're so unusual. You know, you don't see them around too much. And and uh, just something different. I thought you might like it. Okay, next up on the mosh. You know, I'm a huge fan of uh, antiques. You know, I, I, my whole house is surrounded. I'm surrounded by antiques. And it's not because I bought most of them. It's because I've been here for like three generations. And everything just has been passed on. It's just been sitting around. Um, I want to show you a couple things that uh, I, I'm cleaning up. And I came across I thought you might be interested in. But first of all... Let's talk about the uh, unsung hero. One of the unsung heroes is uh, the bucket. You know, we don't think much of a bucket, but it is one of the uh, most used inventions of, uh, of all time. And uh, the collapsible bucket is something you don't really hear about. But let me show you something, some kinds of buckets you never really see okay, much. Okay, here in the other corner of my basement, I have, uh, these have been hanging here my entire life. Do you see what these are? These are fire buckets. And uh, thank goodness I got the... Uh, Big Larry here to uh, to shine it because uh, the lighting back here is. But these are filled with sand, as you can see. There's just sand in there, and these have been here my whole life. And, and the funny thing about these is, if you notice the bottom, they're round bottom. Okay, you see the round bottom on these buckets. And the reason they were didn't, done that way is because so people wouldn't steal them. And uh, this, you know, because a, a round bucket is kind of useless. You can't kind of sit around. You have to hang them up and. These were long before fire extinguishers, so I always thought these Okay, were next cool. up we have this, and look how thin it is, and how cool is this? It's called the Handy Folding Pail Company, New York, New York. Handy 
folding pail. And you can see here, and basically what it is, it's a folding pail. Now you remember these probably, if you're old enough, the old baby carriages used to have something like these uh, tensioners that when you uh, pull them out, they pop into place like that. It kind of snaps in. And when it snaps in, look at this, makes the almost drum tight and you have a bucket. And it's got that cool wooden handle from the vintage wooden handle. And it's a bucket. It will hold water. It'll hold whatever you need. And uh, I just think that's the cat's pajamas. That is so cool. And you can see here, it's got the, you know, uh, the swivel here. And when you want to fold it up, obviously, you just pop that over here. Pop that here. Folds right up. And because it's canvas, what happens is when you saturate it, it'll drip for a little while until it seals up and then... Uh, and then it'll hold water, you know, especially if you're carrying it from a, a pond or something. So that is really cool. I always like that. Now, last up in my house, we had all kinds of glassware. And you've probably recognized this kind of glassware from being old. This was real popular between the 1880s and 1920s. And it's called uranium glass or Vaseline ware. And the reason it was called Vaseline ware because it resembled the petroleum jelly known as Vaseline. But um, this glass here, you could see it's, it has kind of a greenish hue to it. I've always found it attractive. Some people not so much, you know, but I, I like it. And what's really interesting is because it has uranium in it, uh, along with these marbles here, these glass marbles also have, the, it's made of the same type of glass, depending on how much uh, uranium is in it. But when you put uh, a UV light like this one here, when I shine this light on here, this will totally change color and tend to, it excites the uranium. So let me show you what that looks like. Right, really here's cool. the light, the uh, UV light. Now watch what happens when I put on this vase. Isn't that something? It turns, it glows. It becomes a glowing, uh, because it's exciting the uranium within the glass. And you can see it does the same with these marbles here. It, it excites the uranium. And uh, once uranium became scarce and needed for the war, they stopped putting it in the glass. But how cool is that? So, you know, if you have some uranium glass around and you put a little bit of a... Uh, of this light on here, just a little bit of uh, UV light. It excites the uranium, and this stuff will glow from it. It really looks interesting. I always liked it. Thought that was pretty cool. So in closing, remember, uh, Wednesday, November 6th, the hammers are due. you got plenty of time, but uh, if you want to do something nice, you know, and it'll, it'll only take you a couple hours to make a nice hammer, but I hope everybody gets involved, and it'll be a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed today's mosh. Have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.